Welcome to episode 126 of the Concealed Taco Dudes podcast. Yay! <laughs> Stan, you sounded so excited. That's because I'm, I'm about to fall asleep. You're about to go to work. You can't fall asleep. No, that's no, what he that's, does. That's when work. I go to sleep. Yeah, I, sleep <laughs> I sleep for half the time at work. Huh. Yeah. No, it's just because we're in the lounge instead of in the uh, studio, in, ta- in your studio. Yeah. We're in the taco lounge. The taco that's, lounge. I like it. The yeah. taco lounge. <laughs> nice. It's uh, it's luxurious in here. Yeah. It is. And he's got about a hundred computers. You must it's, like computers. It's next to the computer lab. The taco. The, <laughs> the what taco. Do you, what do you lounge? call those? Uh, taco cafe. Like the, uh, the internet, internet cafe. cafe. Yeah. There you go. It's the taco cafe yeah. slash lounge. Yeah. yeah. Taco cafe and lounge. Yes. Pretty luxurious. I wish my house was this nice. Maybe it's time for a career change. <laughs> <laughs> for Stan. <laughs> time I'm, to go I'm back trying. to school. I'm trying, man. Well, today we have me, Doggo. Jason and, with Concealment Solutions. And me, Stan, with me. <laughs> I need to get a, some kind of a, a tagline. Meaning to life, perhaps. <laughs> me, the UPS driver. That's me. All right. If any of your stuff is late that comes from Secaucus, New Jersey, or if it's going to Secaucus, New Jersey, it might be my, my fault, but otherwise it's not. Okay. I have nothing to do with anything else. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so how are we doing? Yeah. So let's let's go ahead and hit some sponsors real quick. All right. We are not in the NOE studio, mm-hmm. but they're still a sponsor. Yeah. NOEbulletmolds.com. Yep. They make some of the coolest bullet molds and reloading casting utilities. <laughs> Yep. Good and if you stuff. go down and visit him in Provo, you can see the famous Concealed Taco Dude studio. Yeah. And he's got some good stuff in there. And you could get your picture taken outside in front of the Concealed Taco mm-hmm. Dude's billboard. Mm-hmm. And if you buy me lunch, I'll come down and uh, take a picture with you. Ooh. <laughs> but there must be food <laughs> included. <laughs> I haven't had breakfast yet. You know, we're going to get requests. Okay, I'm going to be there. Stan, I'm bringing you a burrito. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I'll work for burritos. No, no one cares. You kidding me? Tangents aside. Yes, tangents aside. (laughs) NOEbulletmolds.com. Use coupon code FLT001. It'll save you a few bucks. Yep. Also, keep, keep an eye out for some steel molds that they're tooling up and they're getting really close to producing i talked with al the other day and he was asking which molds to to run first in steel and i thought it'd be cool to get a 300 blackout like the taco bullet because yeah. you could use that in you a could use if you stuff. use lead you could use it for subsonic 300 blackout if you use zinc you can <clears throat> you know use it as a supersonic stan raise your hand can we, <laughs> can, we can we use it in the 762 by 54 r zinc bullets better than lead right Maybe. I don't know. Well, would it be 311s should, or 312s? Should, it, it depends. I see. To be determined. Yeah. Ah, okay. With zinc, I, there's there's a lot. I'm still kind of a noob with zinc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I need to do some more casting. Well, we need to. But I'm excited to get some of those molds in uh, steel, steel so I can do more zinc casting. Cool. I have some zinc ingots ready, uh, you know, to melt down and, and use. We call them zingots zingots <laughs> yes i like it and uh so i need to melt my zingots and make some zinc projectiles Excellent. taco are you wearing a rug that can't be your real hair <laughs> <laughs> he's wearing a rug isn't he I that's not real come on it's, so, it's his elvis wig it, it is it's elvis hair. that's the thickest hair i've ever seen i need a haircut yeah D- did you get plugs to enhance what you already had plugs yeah come on N- the hair plugs you know to make it thicker, no one can have that thicker. No hair extensions. Oh, oh, it's because they call other extensions. extensions. <laughs> I was going to say it could be your heritage, right? My ha- hair heritage. heritage. <laughs> anyway, back back on topic. Yeah. yeah. Just so he's going to run some in in nine millimeter and uh, mm. thirty some thirty cals, and mm. then a, a two two three bullet. That, cool. That looks like it'll Those be sound like good ones to start with. Yeah. So, anyways. Yeah, they are doing that, and they're also making a two-liter bottle, like soda bottle adapter, that will sit on top of a press. So if you're sizing bullets and you're sizing, you know, with oh, the push that through, way. yeah, yeah, then you just put that on top of the die, and then you put your soda bottle, two-liter bottle on top, and then you have like a big 
reservoir. For, That's brilliant. Yeah. That is. And I like that rather than making their own bottle to try and make more money, they're like, hey, we'll give you something so that you can use what you already have. Yeah. NOE is is really part of the Green New Deal, I'd heard. Isn't that part of the Green New Deal? Yeah, it's reduce, Biden, reuse, recycle. Yeah, so they, that's the reuse Biden part. and Harris, that was their idea. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bottle recycling program. Yeah. What, what's it, one trillion for that? I think they've, they've assigned. Yeah, I'm sure some of that's yeah, I'm all for, that. I'm all for way. it. I'm going to call my congressman right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, coupon code FLT001. Yep, 10%. Awesome. Utah Air Guns, utahairguns.com. They're just... They may sell awesome stuff. You gotta get me one. Yeah, so after after shooting like that one time with mm-hmm. Jim yeah. and Carl. Heffelfinger, my yep. my buddy. Yep. He's not our buddy. No, he he can be your buddy too, but he's my buddy first. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's everybody's buddy, come on. He is. <laughs> Including Steve Frenella. Yes, buddy. yes. My which, other my other buddy. Which we're still waiting for the, the hook up there. I think yeah, it's Jim. I think that's called the transitive property. Like, you're friends with Jim. Oh, yes. Jim's friends with Steve. Therefore, Therefore you are friends with mm-hmm. Steve. There you of go. course. <laughs> I think that's how it works. It's perfectly well, I'm, logical. Well, I'm, I'm I'm friends with Bob Redford still, too. So you guys are all friends with Bobby. Him. Bob. We, call, we just call him Bob. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Did he consult with you when he sold a couple Sundance? Times. So, he, well, he, one night he came in, he had a girl there, and he was like, <laughs> what do you think? It's after his divorce. Uh-huh. And I was cooking him dinner, and he, he asked, you know, so what do you think of this girl? I said, I think she's great. You should marry her. <laughs> didn't He didn't take my advice, though. Maybe that's because you dropped his steak on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know that. <laughs> Nor did he eat any of it anyway, because they were in, finished the bottle of wine, and they were gone. Uh-huh. Must have had pressing matters to attend I'm sure to. there was something very important yeah. to yeah. Yep. take yep. care of. Don't know what it was, but... So you mm-hmm. tire, guys? <laughs> you use coupon code? I'm doing this on purpose, you know that. Use the, I don't you know talk, <laughs> use the code Air Candy, And it'll give you... Free, free shipping. Shipping Which and if, turret stickers. If you and live stickers, on the yeah. other side of the country and you're ordering an air gun... That's saving you a ton, because shipping prices are not coming down, people. Mm, nope. Mm, so, yeah, that, in fact, I've seen less traffic already. I think all that cheap gas, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, it, I mean, it's not empirical, but you know, more just sort of anecdotal. But it seems like there's less traffic on. There. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, diesel in uh, Mifflinville, Pennsylvania, was five ninety five last week. I had uh, somebody I was talking to the other day. They were. Thinking about going to the Bay Area, San Francisco, for mm-hmm. a family vacation, mm-hmm. and they were doing a little research and saw that gas was eight dollars a gallon, oh. and they're like, oh, "Yeah, no, not not doing that." Mm-hmm. So, yeah, guess it is impacting it a little bit, but mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So you tire guns, <clears throat> yeah, cool stuff. If if you're in Utah, come down to the go down to the showroom. Well, bring your checkbook and go down and, and, and try out some of the guns. Cause do, they're, do they take checks, personal checks? Well, this, you well, might want to bring your checkbooks anymore. Uh, bring your plastic. Plastic. Yeah, bring, yeah. bring your card or your Bitcoin. <laughs> Ooh. Uh-huh. I'm uh-huh. hip. Uh-huh. <laughs> do they take Bitcoin? That's the question. I'm sure. They're just so heavy to carry that I just don't even bother But anyway, you, got, yeah, go to, you try one, you, you'll want one. It's true. I've never yeah. been with anybody or around anybody who shot an air gun for the first time that either didn't buy one immediately or was like, okay, what do I got to do to get one of these? I've been resisting on I purpose know. just to show restraint. <laughs> uh, but do you think they do they tra- trade ins? I've got a couple of Red Riders that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably trade in. He's got quite an antique collection he? of air guns. <laughs> he does. Mine are probably antiques. They're from when so, I was a little kid. You yeah, know? see? So, yeah. Anyway. Uh, who else? Black Ice Coatings. At blackicecoatings.com. Gun finishes galore. They do excellent work. Yeah, cool stuff. Uh, dips, coatings, Teflon. Yep, all that good stuff. Give them a call. Call Lee up. Tell them you want it slickery. But uh, you should definitely be getting some Teflon, if nothing else. Did I tell you guys what one of our pl- I still got to talk to Lee to okay it. But <laughs> what we want to do with our young men's group. Is. Oh, we're gonna the the boys are gonna come over and we're gonna build like a couple couple guns like AR-15s mm-hmm. and then we'll go down to Black Ice hopefully and uh, get a tour of the facility have them show us all the different colors patterns you mm-hmm. know hydro dipping Teflon coating Sarah coating mm-hmm. all the things that are possible and then we will have the boys pick 
how they want to design the the how the colors guns are going to be finished. Yes, cool. And then we're going to leave like a couple guns to to get done, and then uh, later on when they're done, we will uh, they'll come over here and we'll either make some bullets or we'll just load some ammo. And I'll teach them all about the ammo, the process, the parts, the components, the powder, you know, all that stuff. And then, so they'll make the ammo, then we'll go out to the range. Well, we'll do a safety day first and, you know, talk sure. about gun safety and mm -hmm. everything. But then we'll go and uh, shoot the guns that we built. That they designed. That they designed. Very cool. And then the, with ammo that yeah, we, they, that that they, they made. Yeah. Wow. Cool. These kids, so. these, you know, these kids are going to be addicted when they get older. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> They're the future. We need more of that. They're the gonna... first ones free. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> They're going to be properly educated. Correct. Well, that's, that's the thing is, even if they grow up and don't don't love guns or whatever, at least they will be educated. They'll know gun safety. Yeah. They'll know. They'll have an appreciation for yeah. it, if nothing else. They'll they'll understand that guns don't just. Jump shoot. up, and <laughs> jump up, people. and shoot you. They're yeah. not the evil things that lots of people yeah. want you to believe. It's just, it's yeah, the, uh, yeah. They're safety equipment is what they it's, are. Yeah. Especially safety equipment, tools. If whatever. you live in like Ukraine, it'd be kind of handy to have a couple right now. Yeah, yeah, it would. Poor it guys. Would. So, anyways, blackicecoatings.com. Yep. And tell them you want it slickery. Tell them you want it slickery. <laughs> Magholder.com. Magholder.com. Get, yes. get in the van. I have candy. <laughs> <laughs> Horizontal mag carriers, yeah. and he's got a new line of belts yeah. that are pretty slick. So go yeah. check out Mag Holder. And uh, are you wearing his belt right now, or no? I, no. You, you can say yes. No one. <laughs> uh, but uh, of course You're he not. is. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually not even wearing one of my own belts right now. I'm wearing a cheap webbing belt that I picked up because mm -hmm. I've been losing weight and I'm between notches on my. You're belt. wasting away. He's gonna blow away, Chase. It's not true. You you look, you, you look skinny. You're, you are. You're wasting away. I wish it were true, but uh, I'm 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 getting fit. Yeah, more fit. More so, fit. but anyway, magholder.com. Magholder.com. Get in the van. I have candy. Save you a chunk of money there. Or how deep is your love? Or how yeah. deep is your love? And there's probably a dozen others. Yeah. Concealment Solutions at concealmentsolutions.com. I've really tried to build my website so that it is a one-stop holster shop. And I'm constantly... There are constantly new products that I'm working on. I have two or three right now that are in the works. But I've got chest holsters. In fact, the chest holster, you buy the, the, the kit, mm -hmm. and it is basically a Cobra outside the waistband holster that comes with the chest harness. And our quick clip, so you can put it on your belt. Or take the clips off, put it on your chest harness. So does it fit Either between way. your chesticles? It does. Okay. It, it so lifts it, and separates. It lifts and separates <laughs> the chesticles. Exactly. All right. I like it. Yeah. But drop leg holsters, <clears throat> inside the waist, appendix carry, off body, Didn't all you kinds steal of a couple stuff. of engineers from Elon Musk? SpaceX? Yeah. Uh-huh. In your R&D department, that's what they're doing? Yeah, yeah. that's okay. exactly Exactly. That's a tough. Uh, that's a tough steal, man. Yeah, it pays pretty well. I understand. Uh huh. <laughs> um, I do have. We have an event coming up, the twenty fifth and twenty sixth of March. So that is almost two weeks, week and a half, I guess, depending on when you're listening to this. <laughs> uh, we're doing an open house, spring cleaning. We did one last year. Over the years, so we've been in business eleven years plus. So things pile up. Make a holster that wasn't right because I didn't use the right kydex or the right leather or I made it right-handed. It was supposed to be left-handed. Anyway, I have a whole bunch of stuff that I am just blowing out. Like 50-60% off. Some might even be more than that just to get rid of it because I'm tired of looking at it. All the new stuff will be there on display. You can check out all the different colors and patterns of Kydex. If you have a special project, if you've got knives that you want sheaths made for or any other kind of custom Kydex stuff, you can come bring your stuff. We can talk about it. I have two that you've done that I just love. They're fantastic. Two holsters? Two, um, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, two knife sheaths. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. I don't even remember doing them. Well, see, now that's, that's how important I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Uh -huh. Thanks for not noticing. Uh, no, but you, what I'm saying is, you're an artist. You're, you you can do it on the spot. Uh -huh. Probably while I watched, right? 
Uh, I could, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't like to be watched? No. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need that kind of pressure. Gotcha. But you can drop off the knife and he'll make, yeah. he'll make you a, a really killer sheath for it. Right. So anyway, uh, come check it out uh, Friday and Saturday, the 25th and 26th, and save some money, tell your friends. Get an autograph. Down. Jason will sign them for you. Sure. Some of them come signed. I know, all yeah. mine are signed. I know. Mine are collector's That's items. That's because I care, Stan. I know. <laughs> I've got mine in a case on the wall. Oh, you don't even use them. No. no. <laughs> Uncle Mike's for you. <laughs> no, I get I get the Blackhawks, the Serpas. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those are the good ones. Uh, but I keep yours in a in a locked case. And have you bronzed any yet? No. Oh. That would that'd get rid of your signature. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what's your... Uh, ConcealmentSolutions.com. Use the code... Flash mob? Show me the candy. <laughs> no. No flash mobbing. And you'll save 15%. Cool. Nice. Anyway, now that we've blasted through, we've blitzed through our sponsors mm -hmm. at a blinding pace. Yes. Let's move on to listener feedback. Let's do. All right. I have some listener feedback. This first one is from Matt H. He says, listen to a really good interview of Logan... Mitesh, Mitesh from High Caliber History on a recent We Like Shooting podcast and thought he would be a great guest for the Concealed Taco Dudes podcast. Hmm. He used to be the curator for NRA's Firearm Museum and is a gun historian. From a personality standpoint, I think he would fit in. That's cool. We so should. he's not super sharp then is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he he said personality, not oh. intellectual. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. They kind of go hand in hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And this next one is from, from Zach from Montana. <laughs> and he says, I just wanted to let you know what I do when converting brass. Because last, last time or a oh, couple yeah. times ago, we, we were talking about how I bought some 30 out 6 brass to use for 7-7 uh, Japanese brass conversion. Right. Mm -hmm. And so here's what he says. <laughs> Firstly, my grandfather had spent much of his younger years picking up any brass he could find. So after he gave it to me, I have tens of gallons of cartridges I don't have firearms for. That can be solved taco style. Send them here. <laughs> <laughs> so you can either buy all the guns to fit the caliber. Right. <laughs> or, or just send them Or them convert it. Call, call me says, at 555. 5555. Five, five, five. He says, uh, but some of these cartridges I don't have an interest in, so I convert them to others. Here's my process for 8mm Mauser from 270 Winchester. Firstly, I trim the brass to be about 1 8 of an inch longer than spec. Then I reform the brass in my 8mm die. I then trim to final spec. <laughs> After trimming, I chamfer the case mouse, then anneal. A tip on annealing is to observe a 5.56 five, case and try to anneal a little less than that, as you don't need to anneal that much, but it's a good guide. Annealing is absolutely necessary for case life and for this next step to work. Then I run through them, or run them through my full length sizing die again. This sounds unnecessary, but the more you move the brass, the more it will spring back. So when I only resized once, the brass would only chamber with force. After annealing and resizing again, it chambers as a new cartridge would. That's interesting. Why not anneal it before you size it to begin with? Uh, well, I don't know. It depends, because you'd have to cut it. I guess to anneal the right spot, knowing exactly how far down to go. Right. And then he says, uh, <laughs> I then proceed to load at any load I wish, including full power. Some cartridges need a light load to fire form them, but that is only if some dimension of on the formed brass is undersized than the cartridge you are reforming to. Examples are a different body taper or a shorter shoulder. Mm -hmm. 8 millimeter made like this lasts me a long time and puts uh, puts some use to my 4-gallon bags of 270. Hmm. Well, if you have too much 270, you can always send it <laughs> yeah. this yeah. way. So, uh, and, and what he's doing is going from 2.270 up to 8 to millimeter, eight millimeter yeah. or 6.8 up to 8. If you go the other way, then you need to think about trimming the necks because it, the the neck thickness is well, yeah it, it depends the, the the brass so that's thickness. actually the better way to go is to to resize up yeah so 
Uh, he says, how I kneel is I set a damp rag on the bench of my shop and use a propane torch to heat the cases at a 45 degree angle, pointing the torch at the shoulder. I spin them in my hand, holding the base and count how long until the heat line moves <laughs> to just below the shoulder and then drop it on the damp rag. Low tech, but when annealing brass like, uh, like this, it's next to impossible to over anneal as it will get too hot to hold uh, long before <laughs> that. And then he just says, hope the information is, is useful as it seems like a lost art with many stain or saying that's unsafe or just go buy what you need. <laughs> and uh, which got him into reloading to save money to buy more guns. Sure. Cool. Uh, I've actually looked into that, uh, doing a uh, induction coil, and yeah. uh, there are a couple of videos out there where you can buy components <clears throat> that have a timer, so it's a, a pulse through the induction coil so you don't overdo it or mm -hmm. underdo it, and it becomes really consistent. It's actually pretty fascinating. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've never done any annealing of you. Uh, I've done a little bit, but you know who who has played around with the induction ones, I, I believe, is uh, Travis Buckeye Targets. Oh, no okay. oh. Yeah. Hmm, so I, I think he was doing a what was it called the Annie Annealer or something. Anyways, yeah, I mean you can actually buy the commercial annealing mm -hmm. through indu induction, but you can also buy the components and do it yourself, which I don't know seems appealing just for the yeah sake of learning how to do it. But yeah, it does. I mean, it does save save uh, your brass life. It makes it last a lot longer before the 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 next split. Well, you know, we're going to have to do a lot more of that because there is no brass to be found. It is so hard to find. Yeah, gunnies is... Stuff's starting to show back up. They're getting brass trickling spotty. in. Like, 30 out 6 brass was, was gone for... And 270 brass was gone. It, like, sold out everywhere mm -hmm. locally for a while. But mm -hmm. I, I was just at gunnies and talking with Wyatt, the, the manager there, and, and I, I scored a 1,000 small pistol primers. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. So they do have some primers. Was that today? No, it was last uh, last week. Oh, because I was there on Monday, and they had small rifle magnums. Yeah, small rifle magnums. And rifle. 209s magnums. Yep. Yeah, and they had large <coughs> pistol magnums. So. Yeah, it, it does seem like it's showing back up. Stuff is showing up, but he said <coughs> that they're just not getting, like, all these orders that they placed, like, a year or two ago, they're just getting partial fulfillment like on those, now. yeah, wow. it's just crazy. Hmm. So. Well, they do have a bunch of nine. I've not. I mean, yeah, it was like twenty twenty bucks or nineteen bucks. Well, for... 30, thirty-five cents ran for the case brass. Okay. Thirty cents for st steel. Okay. But they had stacks of it, stacks and stacks. Yeah. And I wish they had that. But well, they, and they have some uh, five, five, six. But man, it's just fifty-three, fifty-four cents around, which isn't bad. Yeah. Um. So that's, go to Gunny's. That's not good. Gunny should. <laughs> it's not bad. Relatively, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Relative. Well, and you think about inflation and stuff too. It's, yeah, yeah, it's hard to know what things should cost right now. Well, yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't see it. I don't see the prices coming back down ever. Yeah, yeah. So. He was he was saying that even at like the what is it sixty seven bucks or seventy around seventy bucks for a thousand primers. Then he said the markup on them is like hardly anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he said he's just the prices are higher now and. That's what he's he's paying just a little bit less than that. So yeah, love gunnies though. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. It's up in Orem. Mm -hmm. Check them out. Okay. So that's that's really good information. Um, yeah, and they they have gotten a lot of projectiles in. So yes, it just it's nice to see stuff start rolling in. Yeah. You know, ammo and reloading. You stuff. know what they had that I haven't seen forever on a shelf? Hmm. A uh, mini thirty Ruger mini thirty. Oh, they had a few of those. They had, yeah, like five of them, different stocks. Yeah, uh, Ruger's kind of stepping up. It's nine hundred bucks though. <laughs> I bought my first mini for like three hundred and fifty. Yeah. You know what I've I found there's kind of a shortage of right now forty four mag revolvers. Hmm. Mm. Like if you if you look online, they're mm -hmm. like sold out. If you look Sorry. at the gun shops, they're sold, sold out. out. I'm like, what's up with like forty four mag revolvers? Like where are they? It's kind of weird. That's because 41 is really the... No, there's not the, 41s the either. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. What? Do you have one, Doc Taco? I, I do not. <gasps> you have something Taco you know, doesn't have? Uh, that, well, Taco, that's too bad. <laughs> I 41 Mag. I, no, I've, I've got that Blackhawk, and I've thought getting a big boy, the, one mm -hmm. of the steel ones, in 41 would be a cool combo. Yeah. Well, I just look at the 41, and it's like, why not get three bigger? 
Yeah, but it's it's yeah, bigger Ford. than a three fifty seven though too. Yeah, well, the five hundred is bigger than the forty four. <laughs> yes, but it's it's sort of one of those boutique, <laughs> the true connoisseurs stick with the forty one. I, oh. I can, I'll teach you all about it, but okay. we don't have time. I'm sure you have a three twenty seven also. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Do you have one? No. I'm, get it. it's, I'm getting one. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, that should be a badge of honor. I have something Taco doesn't have. Yeah. We'll make you a patch. Yeah. Thanks. If you have like a, if you shoot three fifty seven a lot, it's like why would why go down to three twenty seven? It was yeah. tra- it was traded to me by my father in law. So yeah. All right. So <laughs> that that makes you part Cherokee, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I'm, I was already part Cherokee before that. <laughs> oh. It makes me more Cherokee. Oh. Because of the gun. <laughs> <laughs> the association thing. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Sam writes in and he says, Samurai. No, Sam oh. writes in. I liked Samurai, personally. <laughs> okay. Samurai says. writes in, and he says, Taco, one important variable to test with your new venture into zinc bullets would be the hardness of slow cooling versus fast quenching. So that's, he's talking about with uh, cast lead bullets, you know, you if you want to increase the hardness, you can water quench them. Mm-hmm. And... Or you can, if you want to keep them softer, then you air cool them. Like when I'm when I'm doing soft cast, like hollow points stuff, I want to expand. Yeah. Then I I air just cool. air cool them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then if I want something to have a little bit like harder or hardness to it, then I water quench them. And so yeah. Anyways, now zinc zinc is pretty hard as is, and I don't know what water quenching would do. And I don't have a great way to measure hardness because i have the little lee hardness tester Mm -hmm. but zinc is like way harder it's off the scale (laughs) i think it might be off the scale like you're talking about you know like on a really hard bullet you're you know maybe like 25 28 bhn or something and i think zinc with the zinc alloy i have probably up there past 50 or something wow so i mean it's I don't, I don't have a good way to test hardness, but I have heard that water quenching the zinc bullets will, I can't remember which one shrinks them. Hmm. So if you, it, uh, I think it might shrink it. And so if you need to reduce yeah. the size, you can quench them. Huh. Anyways, it, there's lots of experimenting I need to do. Yeah. Well, it looks like you could get a, a fluke uh, zinc hardness tester uh, mm. for $144. Hundred and forty four dollars. <laughs> Why don't you have one of those tacos? Yeah, taco. Uh, What's I going don't know. on? Maybe I maybe I should get one. <laughs> yeah, I just went on. If the anyone Google. wants to donate a what is it called? A zinc I just googly gooed <laughs> zinc, zinc hardness, hardness tester. tester and that's what came up. Yeah. Anyways. He, I'm, I'm helpful like that. I'm hip with the, <laughs> with the technology. Yeah. Samurai, Samurai continues and says, I've seen tremendous differences in dead soft lead hardness depending on how fast I cooled them out of the mold. The results were shot were a shot deer running a hundred yards versus fifty. Both deer were shot clean through the lungs with the forty five seventy hmm. at about uh, ten fifty feet per second. This is only two data points, but with your with the help of your international podcast <laughs> <laughs> we could get more. Maybe maybe Steve uh, Rennell might know something about it. Should we ask him? Yeah, maybe. When, when he comes on, okay. yeah, we'll definitely make a note and talk to him about that. Okay. Samurai continues and says, If I could remember what I searched to find the article, I would link it to you. But somewhere out there is an article from somebody that tested hardness after cooling bullets both slow and fast before and after powder coating them which is obviously an annealing process. They did this for lead and gave interesting results. You could continue this with zinc now that the government is trying to strip the world of lead. Yeah. It's probably one of your videos that got It's actually, <laughs> there's there's a good video series from TATV Canada. Hmm. And he, he used to do, I don't know if he's still making videos, but his he's... All of the the bullet casters have gotten real big hits on their channels, like right. videos deleted, channel strikes, yeah. etc. So I don't know if his videos are still there, but I actually used his stuff as a reference for some of my hmm. stuff. He he did a really good research on that. Cool. So. All right, and then Kevin C says, catching up on the last three podcasts regarding 299 days. That's the book series mm, that yep. I I'm on book ten now, the the final book, and he says. Glenn remarried to Shelby Gallagher. They have their own podcast, which mm-hmm. is prepping2-o.com. Yep. Huh. 
I'll have to give it a listen. Yeah. Oh, you didn't be know cool. that? No. Nope. They, yeah, they're also on YouTube. He says it'd be cool to get you, uh, if you could get them on. So that that'd be a you should, I'll, I'll that'd be fun because him. now that I've you I've know kind of read the to, books and I stuff. I talked to Glenn a month or so ago about coming on, and he's all for it. We just need to figure out the best way to do it. What's What's so crazy is he wrote that book. How, how long ago was it? Like seven years ago, something like no, that. No, it was longer than seven. It's uh, it couldn't been too much longer than that. Hmm. It, it was when yeah. we were first starting. Yeah, you know, the Gundy but podcast. Yeah, probably two thousand ten ish. Yeah, well, you know, yes, Olympia, so, yeah. Olympia, yeah. and Seattle, and you know Washington is a little bit further down the road, down the tracks. You know, going off yeah. the rails. What's What's interesting though is like the some of the things that he wrote about. It's if you see some parallels with what's going on today, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like, oh crap, <laughs> yeah. it's all about to, <laughs> all you know, about to happen. What scares me the most is uh, he talks about the 401ks. Yeah, how the government just scares me to death. Grabs yeah. that money to. The IRS help fund. could just say, uh, anyone that has more than 100000 in a 401k doesn't need it. We'll just take it. Because yeah. they could, I mean, they could literally do anything they want. Hmm. Change the tax code at any time, but yeah, he's a bit prophetic in in some yeah. of that so stuff we're seeing. That'd be a, a good guest to have it's good on. See, it's a good uh, good series. I really enjoyed it. And then mm-hmm. Kevin C also says, as far as Black Ice doing titanium nitride, it isn't plated. And he got some stuff from Wikipedia. And he says the most common methods of titanium nitride thin film creation are physical vapor deposition, deposition PVD usually sputter deposition and cathodic cathodic arc de- anyways there's all these like there's fancy ways electric to do it. <laughs> beam heating and chemical vapor and mm-hmm. and then he says in both methods pure titanium is sublimed huh. and reacted with nitrogen in a high energy vacuum environment mm-hmm. that's that's pretty crazy pretty huh. high and then he says, so I'm guessing... So basically what he's saying is it's not an easy process. He says... It requires some technical... I'm guessing those are pretty stuff. speedy setups. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not sure which process produces the chalky, glassy surface finish. <laughs> Keep up the great podcast. <laughs> the shiny, chalky... The chalky, chalky. glassy... <laughs> I yeah, that was. Something like uh, rigidly flexible, chalky... Rigid. A shiny chalk. Shiny chalk. Shiny dull finish. It's, yeah. a, it's a dull shine that I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, dull shine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, good times. Uh, really good questions. We didn't get any feedback on training, local training, did we? Anybody talking about local training? Not yet. I'd like to do some more handgun training, IDPA, yeah. UDPL, uh, pistol, should, carbine. Now that it's getting a little bit warmer and drying out, we should go out and do our own, set up some stages. and. So I listened to a book, a really good book, and I'm going to plug uh plug it it's uh gosh violence of mind by varg uh something anyway he talked about setting your mission what is your mission at least doing a a specified level of training to be competent i felt pretty competent when we were shooting uh, udpl and doing yeah the mag 40s um yeah i carried with confidence and now not so much i I, you know it's like gosh dang we should at least go out and shoot the uh, qualifier. Yeah. To at least maintain that level, and far beyond that was probably better. But that base level of training would. Be well, better. and what I miss doing that I need to. Going out and shooting. Well. <laughs> that. Inside your air gun. You, you you need to I do sh- some powder burning. You, you're right. That, but moving and shooting because even the Mag Forty qualifier, you're standing in one place. Shooting a specific number of rounds and then you reload and back yeah, up. Yeah, but your heart rate doesn't ever go up. There, there right. is that little bit of time urgency. But um, <clears throat> I'm getting in shape, uh, you know. So I'd like to do a little running and gunning. Yeah, not so much running and gunning tactically, but do some exercise. And I think elevated heart rate too. And moving around obstacles and having distractions. So while you're moving and shooting, we mm-hmm. could like throw golf balls at mm-hmm. you. To or cheeseburgers. That would be more than <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, yeah, I think I, I'm with you. I need to, I need you to have, do you, more. Have you shot the qualifier yet? I have not. It, it, I think it would be good to do. Yeah, yeah. I you guess you show me, and then I'll show we, you. We'll teach you. <laughs> we'll, we'll, ouch. <laughs> yeah, a little cocky. <laughs> the Padawan thinks he can do it. <laughs> Actually, I think we're the pad one. He's, he, he's teaching. Us. He's, he's got. I, I've, it's been a while since I've been out shooting handguns. Yeah, 
But I'd like to do a carbine course again, too. Yeah, um, agreed. Uh, urban rifle, you know, stuff like that, and some more long-range precision. Yeah, I mean, I, that would be cool. So, anyway, that's really good feedback. Thanks so much. You know, we learn from all the stuff that uh, you guys say, too, so give us more feedback. We, we really appreciate it. For yeah. sure. Good tips and, and tricks to, to know. Okay, so we have a lot of stuff just laying on the floor and against the couch. We're gonna try. We're gonna play here and tell. We're gonna do here and tell. Yeah, here and here and tell. And uh, so So what we did with guns is that where we're at. And yeah, our our show and tell, but they don't get to see. I'll go first. You go first. Quick. We'll try and go. Yeah, I'll I'll even go through my. I brought my my Talon P, my Air Force gun, because I added stock or. Not stock. The stock. You did add a stock. I did add a stock, but we know that. I uh, added sling mounts. So I added a sling mount to my stock. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then... Now, this is your custom stock that's on your website. It is. Do you have any yeah. of those in your uh, throwaway bin? I actually... I don't have any in the throwaway. Actually, you know what? I do have one that's got a cosmetic flaw. I'll take it. Do you have a Talon P? Not yet. Okay. Get one. <laughs> and I'll hook you up. <laughs> Well, I want the one with the discount, though. I don't want to pay full price. I don't want you. I don't want you gouging me like you do every month. <laughs> right. Anyway, so you, this is an, an addition. You just put. It's the, an addition that you could put on to the to the stock. So it's yeah. That's Not, just a sling I had. It's a nice around. little yeah. Allen, just a nice little padded Allen sling. Yeah. Cool. It matches really good. You have that camo, and then you have like zombie green on the. It, it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> did, match did at this, all. Uh, did this come on the gun? Normal? The handguard yeah, is yeah. on handguard. the gun. I so drilled a hole drilled in it? the handguard to mount that. Wow, that's pretty one. technical. Drilling a hole. You know what? I took it off. I don't know, Stan. And you you change barrels on a gun. That's right. And because a it's an I'm a gunsmith, basically. Yeah. Handguard. <laughs> there was a little circle depression in there from the the. Form, would you say which it was, was the perfect mark for? A, oh, that's where I need to drill that hole. Was, <laughs> would you say it was like a dimple, the Almost. opposite of a nipple? It's it was <laughs> like the, the opposite of nipple. It yeah. was a, a, a dimple. Exactly. Okay. I also replaced some foam in some of my presses, and therefore I made myself some more shooting blocks. Those mm. are good. You they should sell good. those. Uh, I have one. I just used it yesterday good. or Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I made a, a, a tiny one that's kind of goofy shaped. I don't know if it'll be worth while or not. But oh, I don't have yeah. We ought to get a picture of it though. Uh, you, you you let me try yeah, the, the, the prototype. <laughs> it is really nice. I like yeah. it. Yeah. No, I, I I have you mine have one too? and okay. I use it a lot. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Is and that all? Is that all you did? That, I I picked up a generator. That's not uh, that's not that's prepping guns. That's prepping. But Which one did you get? So I, I was trading with our friend at the pawn shop. He needed some holsters, and he had a Ryobi mm-hmm. inverter, twenty two hundred watt inverter. Which the inverters are nice. They run super quiet. Mm-hmm. It's about the size of a, a small suitcase, small briefcase. cooler. Yeah, yeah, like a small cooler. But an inverter produces clean energy, so you can plug. It has um, uh, what do you the cords you plug your phones in with? Uh, USB. Yeah, has mm-hmm. USB plug, so you can plug your phone right into it. You can plug a computer into it. But it's gas like powered, that. right? But it's gas powered. So I was really happy to pick that up, and it was a it was a pretty good deal. So awesome! I need to do some testing with it. It should run my refrigerator just fine. I'm going to see if it'll run freezer. Yeah. A uh, see if it'll run. I've got these electric uh, oil heaters. See if it'll run one of yeah, those some, and yeah. stuff like that. So radiant heater. Yeah, 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 radiant heater. So anyway, love it. That's what I've done with guns. Well, because yeah, let, I'll do. Let me go next, and then okay. Taco can have. We can leave. Taco we'll, we'll can have. rest. Yeah. <laughs> so I reaches recently reaches recently acquired a uh, Mosin Nagant again. What reacquired? Yeah. Oh. And I took it out shooting Saturday. How was it? Uh, it's it's fun. They're they're fun guns. Um, what, what kind of ammo were you shooting? The Barnall from uh, Gunnies that was thirteen dollars uh, three weeks ago. Now it's fifteen. Oh, hmm. yeah, dang. But I, I just buy, I got a couple of cases, um, and I found some PPU brass. I've got fifty pieces coming. Oh, nice. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, so I got a sling, and I got the gu- the cleaning kit uh, to go on the gun because y- you need a sling. So I've got it. I went on eBay and picked up uh, a sling and and the cleaning kit and something else I can't remember. But um, <clears throat> oh, the brass. So I'm gonna get some dyes and we're gonna do some lead with 
gas checks or maybe mm -hmm. zinc. Yeah. Something like that. But it'll be a fun little gun to, to, to load for. Um, you know, it's just old. I mean, it's, what is it, 90 years old? Uh, it's almost as old as you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, the, it was my uh, my middle SERP day, so I took my SKS out, too. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. I, I, I still like the SKS. Yeah. I, I have not shot mine in years. It's a blast. Yeah. yeah. And, oh, they had uh, 760 by 39 Wolf at Gunny's. Cases oh, of it. Nice. I need to go get some. How much, how much did you, so you just recently picked up the Mosin and got? Yeah. What what did you pay for it? <laughs> I, I'm not allowed to say, am I, Taco? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you buy it from Taco? I yeah, from Taco. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just bought it because it was from Taco. Okay. I'm going to try and get him to autograph it. <laughs> I'll, I'll scrape it with my knife. <laughs> yeah, so that it'll be collectible. Okay. Know? But oh, uh, cool. No, actually, he gave me a really good deal. Uh, Three-ish, 350 yeah. No, it wasn't that much. Was it? It was yeah, 325 Yeah, something like that. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, kind of a steal. Okay. I mean, I've seen them for four or five hundred. They're they're crazy expensive now compared to what in, they were. This is pretty, in great shape. Like ten condition. years ago, you so could pick them it, up for almost it, nothing. I was shooting it at uh, like fifty yards just to check it. The old eyes don't do real well on, <laughs> on iron irons sights. out that far. Which is why I, I I just realized why I don't have a lot of iron sighted rifles. Hmm. I just don't have the eyesight for it. So I put my glasses on, then the front sight's blurry, but I can see what I'm shooting at. Yeah. There's a, yeah. there's a thing. So Mass talked about that, having bifocals on the top. Yeah. So as you look down, you, the bifocal is on the top. Your normal distance is, is on the bottom. Right. Uh, but that's more for handguns, I think, than a rifle. I think it would apply to a rifle as well. Well, but the problem is, yeah, I could see the front sight, but then anything beyond it would be fuzzy. Right. So, mm. But anyway. that's but that's how you're supposed to shoot, right? Hard focus on the front sight and your targets a little Up close, blurry. but if you're you're shooting that's a deer true. at 100 yards, that's true. your front post is as big as the deer. That's true. Forget about two, three, four hundred. Yeah, yeah so. and I, I have taken that particular rifle out to about 500 yards. Yeah. Shoots nice. right on. Seems like it. Yeah, I was getting some horizontal, but that's just me pulling the trigger. Yeah. Um, so and they're different triggers. Yeah, they're not quite as nice as, say, like the Swiss rifles or the... I've thought about putting the Timney in it, but then that just kind of defeats the whole purpose. Yeah, so. and then you have to, you actually have to mill out a part in the stock, the stock. And it's for the yeah. safety. And it's, it's a Mosin, that's what I bought it for. Right. Yeah. Uh, so the SKS, the I, I sighted in my uh, AR with that uh, Vic, Victory uh, LPVO that, uh, oh, yeah. that you also... Yeah blessed me with and uh, it's it's a nice little scope i mean seriously for the money especially yeah i gave him a real good deal yeah nice. uh <laughs> the, it's not daylight visible the light is not but i uh, be, well and the reason is i, I can't use red dots what? or leds because i have astigmatism mm -hmm. and they just look like starbursts huh that well i think it's that and i also had lasik i think and have Cataracts. So, <laughs> I mean, Sounds like your eyes are like. Yes, I'm. I'm eye challenged. <laughs> so uh, uh, I need an etched reticle, really. And uh, mm -hmm. this is my first LPVO, and I think it's the way to go. I'll probably yeah. be maybe a razor next. You know what the heck? Take out a loan. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse mortgage. Yeah, exactly. Nice. So uh, yeah, I did that, and uh, then I've been cleaning guns. In fact, I was late here today because I was cleaning out that Mosin. Man, that stuff's dirty. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so yeah, you, you and I think sure. it's corrosive too. Yeah, if you, if you do corrosive stuff, you gotta kind of rinse out the the corrosive, mm -hmm. like the salts from right. the primers. So yeah, so and I've got some uh, some Barnes uh, barrel cleaner that I put through it. So yeah, hey, I did something with guns. It was fun. Awesome. Yeah, taco. All right. <laughs> so first off, I have these nice little three hundred eight zinc rounds. Those are. They look good, huh? Those are not coated, are they? No, it's just plain. Cast zinc. Have you shot any yet? I haven't yet. Let's go shoot. I need them. to. Well, yeah. Let's do it uh, Monday, next Monday, a week. I was gonna say today. Oh, I can't do it. You today. can't go. Okay. Yeah. Next Monday. Let's do it a different okay. day. All right. Maybe this weekend. Okay. Uh, and then I. So, did, a question, real quick. Yeah. Uh, I've seen videos on uh, guys using 308 uh, instead of 311 or 312 in the the Mosin Nagants. There is a little bit of accuracy mm. degradation. Yeah, Johnny's because, reloading. Yeah, you have your bullet bouncing around in the bullet. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. Rattling down the barrel. Yeah. But uh, at 100 yards, he was getting an average of like three inch groups versus two and a half inch groups with the 312, which is pretty acceptable in my book. Yeah. yeah. But anyway. But it might be nice if, depending on how the zinc, you know, turns out, you know, maybe we'll do some 762 by 54R with some 
zinc bullets. Yeah, but 311s. And these these would normally uh, weigh about uh, 150. No, no, no. Normally they would weigh in lead about 220, 225. Oh my gosh. And in zinc, same size, but just in cast in zinc, they're 137, 138 grain. Wow. So, Hmm. So it's weird because they're a big bulky bullet that weighs less. It's a long yeah. bullet. Yeah. Uh, it's a 300 blackout bullet. I, I, I really want to shoot those. I, yeah. I want to see what they do. So, oh, it's the 220 grain yeah. mold. Yep. Awesome. So so that's why I, I load it in the 308 case because there's a little bit more case capacity. So you can put a little bit more powder. In 300 blackout, I don't know how fast you could get them going. They're lightweight, but... They take up a lot of case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. how, how much does uh, zinc cost? Can you buy zingots? Zingots? I, I don't know where you'd buy them, but most tire shops, that's where you'd get them. Get zinc gotcha. real weights, and then gotcha. you got to process them, melt them down. It takes quite a bit more heat uh-huh. to melt it down. And I, I think I posted something on Instagram that shows like how like make sure your sound is off (laughs) but it it shows how like wet the zinc is if that makes sense like they uh there's a little bit uh you you know how if you get your you stick your hand in water then your hand comes out wet right Mm -hmm. but with familiar so you stick your hand in zinc and it comes out wet it probably would (laughs) if it came out and cooked medium rare or medium you could do the zinc actually sticks to the clips and so, yeah, I have a clips. Oh, the, the wheel weight clips. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the tire. Yeah, but in when you're melting lead, then the clips like float to the top, and they just there's they don't stick together at all. Huh. The lead doesn't stick to it. So. So the process is a little. So it's a little bit more time yeah, consuming. It's, it's, well, yeah, it's more time consuming. It takes more heat. Mm-hmm. So that's more propane or whatever you're using mm-hmm. to right. get it hot. And then as well, it's the you get. Uh, some more waste because some of the zinc sticks to the clips Stays as you clip. s- skim it out. Uh, mm. So huh. just it's, it's weird. It's a different metal, a different alloy, and so it, it behaves a little bit differently. So, anyways, I got to get those fired through this gun that I recently picked up from our mutual pawn shop yeah. buddy. Yeah. I pulled and into the parking lot and somebody's car was in my spot. Which which <laughs> pawn shop is this? This is a VIP, VIP pawn. VIP pawn. It's right next to Utah Air Guns, actually. It's yeah, about a block from Utah Air Guns. On that same side. Same side. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Next so, to the tattoo shop. Gotcha. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to stop there yeah. on my next uh, tattoo run. Yeah. So you I, bought that from the pawn shop? No. Oh, okay. he, he's, he's my preferred FFL. Oh, I see. Gotcha. So I get all my guns okay. shipped there. And this one is a Bear Creek Arsenal. It's a $660 AR-10. And wow. I now I did swap out the stock because I had the, the Magpul UBR Gen 2. And, and the trigger. And the trigger. So it has a Timney trigger in right now. Mm. And the UBR Gen 2 stock, which is one of my favorite AR stocks. They're they're a little pricey. They are expensive, but the thing I like about them is that no matter how far you extend the length of it, mm-hmm. the face piece stays in the same place. <laughs> so your face weld doesn't move. Your, yeah, your cheek weld is the same whether you're a small kid or so. If you're using optics, mm-hmm. then it you set it up and it doesn't matter if you're a tiny kid or like a big oaf. What hand guard you know. hand guard is that on that pistol grip? I mean. Oh, that's a, uh, and I, I did swap out the the grip too. It's a B five systems Ooh. grip. It's a little bit sharper angle, mm-hmm. a little bit more vertical. Kind of like the Magpul K two. Yeah, Care-t- but is feel it the feel the texture on it. it. Yeah, the oh, texture's nice. really nice. That's really nice. Ooh. So, and I threw on one of those Athlon BTR Gen two six to twenty fours. Yeah, that's kind of my go to if you want like a. Kind of like a long range or long distance shooting scope with uh, and save a few dollars. Yeah, that's how much that's are they running now? You know, I, I'm not sure. Gotcha. I've I've got one too. The Gen Two that your uh, elevation knob's much nicer than on the Gen One. Oh, on the Gen One. Yeah. yeah. So I have about like five of these scopes. Yeah, I I like them. Yeah. Have you seen the Arkin? I've not played SH4? with any of the Arkin optics yet. For four hundred bucks, yeah. that's about what these are going for. I would think. It's a good-looking scope, yeah, and I, so, I love mine. I mean, uh, 
Anyways, it, it doesn't massage your eyeball. Yeah, like, you want to see it? I've played. Yeah, before. like a U.S. Uh, optics or something like that. But yeah, if, you know, for it's, non-professional, it's kind it's... of a budget type long-range shooting mm-hmm. scope. So I threw it on there because I figured, you know, if I'm gonna, oh, and this is the rifle I'm gonna be doing my zinc testing with. So if I if I burn out the barrel or whatever, then mm-hmm. it's, it was only a, a an inexpensive, you know, Bear Creek Arsenal, right? Which barrel? <sighs> I've had good luck with. It's them. a little heavy, I, yeah, uh, but it feels like a great gun. And then I've been happy with stuff I've got from Bear Creek. I don't have any issues with anything I've had. Now, if I get a, a bullet mold from Al from NOE, a steel one in two two three, then I have this AR fifteen. It cost me three hundred fifty bucks. Also from Bear Creek. Bear with, Creek with the lower. Uh, just ev- total the complete everything. Complete gun. Yeah, free floated handguard, side charge, and side charge. The side charge actually feels pretty good. It, it does. It, it feels like an AK forty seven. I prefer like a, side charge uppers for my ARs. I think the oh. side charge. It now it is reciprocating. So if if yeah. you're a lefty, you don't want to have your yeah, hand over there. It's a little there intimidating. Or, yeah, if, if you're a lefty and it's yeah right next to your eye. But yeah, my my side charge uppers they're are left-handed so, so that's also a little, that's also a little heavy but they these are cnc they're not uh they're not forged i presume they look different the lower yeah and the, the, the upper, lower obviously. is is machined it's a, little a pretty different. meaty lower yeah. yeah it is that's what i'm saying but, but i kind of like could, it they could remove a lot of material right there and, and material and make it lighter but other than the super bright uh yeah. Engraving. Yeah, the, the engraving is like it's like it's blinding. Eye, it's a blinding eyesore kind of. But that's an but, easy fix, also. Yeah. Oh, I thought you uh, had some put color. paint in or something. No, but it's it's just like, engraving. No, that's yeah. just the aluminum. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen that before. But you could you could throw some. An easy fix would just be to put some fingernail polish in it and then wipe off the the excess. Absolutely. Um, Three hundred fifty bucks. You, yeah. You can't go wrong with that. No. I mean, seriously. Unless it doesn't work. Unless it doesn't work. <laughs> and it becomes but, a paperweight. Yeah, I've read some good reviews on Very those. nice. Very nice. So, I like it. Then I also, while I was there, uh, the transfers came through for the yeah. PTR rifles. He, he made several trips with guns out of the shop to his car when so he was done. This one is the PTR-91. It's the 308 rifle, and it's got the forward side charging, non-reciprocating. Non, non-reciprocating. Yeah. This is the G3 A G3 uh, clone. clone, yeah, made by PTR Industries. <laughs> so, That's a good-looking rifle. Yeah, and it's it's not, I mean, it's heavy, but it's not I, too I heavy. I want one of those. Seriously. Yeah. This I don't know. It has iron sights. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> that's true, but it's got a diopter too. Yeah. Which oh yeah, that's much better. Yeah. <laughs> uh no kidding. That's a that is a so nice. So that one's nice you know one. how how much was that one? It was thirteen uh, ish. Oh, okay. Oh, that's why you wanted you were gonna rape me. No, you offered sixteen hundred <laughs> and I said I said, Oh yes, I'll sell it to you for sixteen hundred and I'll even throw in ten magazines. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Now that uh that mag so I've never had one of these before never touched one actually I've seen a G3 how do you put the mag in oh, it's like it a slight rock yeah. like an AK-47 but not that, that's not kind of hard to reach ergonomically that's different than what I remember I, I mean I've had one before safe is up down is fire that's a good looking rifle you've yeah. you fondled it but you know uh, a while back we talked about you know guns we were that were on our list yeah. for the future and mm-hmm. I said a, a 308 battle rifle yeah that's that's, that's it, it. Yep. that's it I, I wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily call that bear creek ar-10 a, 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 battle a 308 rifle. battle rifle no but well let's see how this shoots yeah it supposedly they shoot pretty decent because they have really good barrels and stuff so when we when we go test the zinc i'm not going to throw zinc in there yet yeah until i what's this one it. right here this, these those uh, are your takedown takedown pins yep that's interesting. So that the PTR ninety one that uh, shoots three hundred eight. It's, mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. The magazines are pretty cheap. They're inexpensive. You know, you can get them for like. Oh, see, it, it comes with a rail though. Yeah, the rail's and, built in, so I and c- you I can, can actually get a cheek riser that pops in the two holes. Okay, on the stock. stock. Yeah. Gotcha. So it has two pins to hold it in place. Now this one right here is the PTR thirty two. And uh, this one is the cool thing about this is it shoots 7.62 by 39, 
So the AK round, the SKS round. Looks like it takes AK mags. Yes, and it takes AK mags. Nice. So it's right now I just have the, the P mag in there, but I've I've tested it, some of my Korean mags, mm -hmm. some, uh, what was it, uh, I think I have some old Yugoslavian mag. Like I have all mm -hmm. kinds of different mags from from all around and they all seem to fit fine. Now the, the construction of these is interesting. Yeah. They're welded. Yeah, it's... That's interesting. I've never seen one like that. You haven't shot them yet, have you? I haven't shot it yet. You know, I like AKs, but oh, this but that, might be a better way to go. That's kind of yeah. a, a nice nice little gun. That's yeah. really, really it, slick. It feels like and ergonomic and solid, yeah. Yeah. And it's not rattly like an AK. Yeah. Although, no, not at all. Like AKs, that's... I mean, I kind of like the rattle with an AK, but... Yeah. Hmm. Uh, more intelligent. Uh, In this, adjustable gas blocks on both of them, or no? Because the fouls you can adjust. Are these these are not adjustable, are they? You know, I I'm not sure. <laughs> Doesn't look like it, but it, it's a cool sounding gun. I, I won't you agree, audience? They yes. they sound awesome. <laughs> so hopefully, once Stan and I take them out to shoot, Jason's invited too. Then He's uh, fondling the tip of your barrel. <laughs> The nipple of it? Or, I mean, <laughs> that what? sounds that sounds horrible. <laughs> uh, so this is your uh, MDX MDT that you were talking about. Yeah, the it's a different chassis. XRS, yeah. yeah it's That's your of, 22 Creed. Yeah, I really like that. Yep. Guess it, now I think I can get the stock. I can afford the stock, but the <laughs> the uh, scope might be a little bit out of my league. That's a razor. It's the old Mortal. generation razor. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's a Gen Ooh. One razor. Wow, have you tried this? Uh uh. That it is feels phenomenal. good. <laughs> Ooh. So, so it's, it's, I highly recommend that chassis. This is a 22 Creedmoor with a uh, uh, in, in a, a Savage. Yep. In the uh, X MDT XRS stock. That is, wow, that's going to be a varmint killer. Yeah, so it's a XRS chassis. Yeah. But Love that. If you haven't seen those before, I. I Strongly recommend taking a look at them. They're, See my, my LS. They're a little bit more <laughs> expensive, but they feel great. Is, is that just a like a sun? It's a sunshade. Sun shade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think my my vortex. What was it anyway? One of my scopes has got one. Very nice. Like, you were put it right on the 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 heavier bolt knob. Oh, did you? Yeah. Feel you know, that. I I actually like the hog hunter better. Yeah. And this seems like it's too big. Oh. It, if you pull on it, it it. Uh, can sometimes bind it up. Yeah, it's the the thought is like you can you can kind of work it with a couple fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's what I have on mine. But uh, yeah, we need to. Uh, have you been able to find any twenty two Creed brass? I've been changing or converting six. I found Creed some more. six. I, I kind of don't want to do it though for accuracy. I'm wondering how much difference it would make. Yeah, or the I think they have Peterson brass that's that's available. It's, oh, I haven't really seen any expensive. available. Yeah. Uh, yeah, otherwise I would have got some. But I just got some. I got some once fired six Creedmoor brass. Yeah. At Gunny's in some gallon Ziploc bags. Oh, like, really? Back in the day. Okay. And so I was like, oh, I'll, I'll get these at least to do lo like some load development and you know whatever. Sure. I have some Lapua brass that I I have that I could use for some a little bit more precision stuff. But I figured for working up loads. You know, on the uh, chassis, did you get it on the Black Friday sale? I actually got it through <laughs> our buddy Kenny. Kenny, um, yeah, Eagle Eye Shooting Channel. Oh no, kidding. Yeah. So gotcha. when he when he he's the one who installed the barrel for me. Yeah. And then I told him I I could use a chassis, so I I ordered it through him. Well, you should have had me in, install it. I'm a I'm a gunsmith. Well, now. you you weren't a gunsmith back then. <laughs> you only recently became you, a gunsmith. You, you hadn't had your training yet, Stan. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. it, so, it's going to be interesting. We we have a lot of work ahead of us. Yeah. So I guess uh, you know that's. <sighs> That's going to be part of the, you know, this year's 2022's activities is doing some 22 Creed more, some shooting of some zinc bullets. That's and kind stuff. of the theme of the year. 22. Yeah. 22. 22 Creed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. But Jason wanted we, we to, planned it. to talk a little bit about, you know, stuff that's going on today yeah, in the I world just, and how it affects us. Yeah. And we, now, Jason's Corner. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of things have changed in the last couple of years, right? 
with with COVID and and all the stuff that's that's happened and the way things are still kind of up in the air with a lot of stuff, you know, people, I think people's mindset on a lot of things have changed. And then I've noticed also with, uh, with what Russia's got going on over in Ukraine. What's, what's going on over there? Oh, just a thing. <laughs> you just have a little scuttle or something. Yeah. Some people did something just a dis- over there. They're having a little disagreement, Stan. <laughs> a little one. <laughs> But uh, I've noticed uh, a, a difference in a lot of the way people are thinking and things that they're doing. And I wanted to talk to you, with you guys uh, if you guys have noticed any th- things that are different or things that mindsets that have changed. And I would really like to hear from our listeners what they're seeing. One of the things, there's a few things that, that have came to my mind in the last couple of weeks. But local grocery store here... For one, they they have an annual um, case lot sale. Case lot case sale. sale, yeah. Yeah, and <clears throat> and so my wife was looking at the flyer and was like, "Oh, look, they've got these twenty five pound bags of flour that she likes. That was on a good deal, and you can buy cases of canned beans and all that kind of stuff." And so she went she went down there three or four different times. So the sale goes on for two weeks, mm-hmm. and they never had any of the stuff that she was looking for. In fact, they didn't have hardly any of the stuff that they had advertised. And finally, she says, hey, what is going on? Where? Why don't you have any of this stuff? And whoever, the manager, whoever she was talking to says, well, we ordered what should have been a two-week supply worth of all that stuff. And it was all gone in three days. Mm-hmm. And I was like, holy crap. That's didn't the, they say that they ordered some, but it didn't? they didn't receive I think everything. there was some stuff that didn't. Yeah, they just... Like shortages. Yep. Mm-hmm. Shortages, so stuff never, never even arrived that they were expecting to have. So stuff like that kind of perks you a little bit, and like, huh, maybe I need to be looking at things a little bit differently. Also, like I, I'd mentioned, I'm been teaching these classes at uh, at our church on preparedness, and so I sent out a few weeks ago a list of different topics and just said hey let me know which of these topics you're most interested in what do you want to learn about and stuff like that and um you know obviously i think the number one th- topic that people are interested in was you know how do i cook with my food storage people are storing <laughs> stuff that they don't even know how to cook i was just gonna <laughs> say <clears throat> you gotta be real careful the whole idea is to rotate can oh, yeah. storage yeah because it doesn't last forever right uh mandarin oranges my kids loved them. Uh-huh. <laughs> we had two cases. They grew up, and we just stopped eating them. Oh, yeah. Uh, end of last year, we went through and we were reviewing our our food storage. Doing inventory. They ate through the cans and dripped syrup down on all my other stuff. Oh, uh, two geez. full cases. It ate right through the cans. Wow. So I said, um, we need to rotate this stuff. You need to cycle through it. For One sure. of the really good tools that my daughter found, and I've seen them before, is a first in, first out. Yeah. Oh yeah, for you sure. Ca- you, they cost a little bit of money, but you put it in, and it's first in, first oh, out. Oh, for the, the those can rotating foods. shelves. Yeah, yeah. So that. Yeah. And and or you write the date on the stuff. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. But we have a pantry in the kitchen, and also cold storage downstairs. Right. You got to eat out of the cold storage. Yeah. Bring it up to the pantry and eat it out that oh, way. Oh, for sure. But we found soup. Yeah. It's like 10 years old. Yeah. They're not bulged yet. Oh, so they're fine. <laughs> <clears throat> they probably won't kill you, but the nutrition is probably gone and they probably taste like crap. That, so, yeah, probably. Th- that's the whole thing. Is So we have a ton of wheat. Yeah. I don't have a grinder. Or yeah, a, you need to get a... Uh, Dan's going to be boiling his wheat. I mean, you of, can do that, too. One I've of the things, it, if but, you uh, have uh, like a high-end blender, like mm-hmm. a, a Blendtec or something like that, yeah. You can actually grind your wheat in a yeah, blend. We've blender. We've done it before. Yeah, it's hard on the blender it, cup. Yeah, mm. we we blew through a blender cup doing that. But yeah, but one of the classes that surprised me the most that people wanted, and I just threw this out there because it's something that I mm-hmm. like and that I do and that has a huge benefit. But I don't think a lot of people think about it. Was is the art of bartering. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the top classes that people were interested in, which made me think people are, are thinking outside of the box a little bit. <laughs> yeah, well, it, the question is, when would bartering become, like, important or the skill of bartering? So, for me, if any of you, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners listen to Jack Spirko's um, 
the survival, survival podcast. Yes. And one of the things that he always talks about is everything we do for preparedness makes your life better, even if there's yeah. never a disaster. And bartering is absolutely one of those things. I get stuff super cheap because I trade all the time. You know, that generator was super yeah. cheap because I traded holsters for it and it was used at a pawn shop, so it was already cheaper than. Yeah. I now, think, does it work? Have you tested it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, that's, they, the, that's the nice thing about Antonio is he doesn't take in crap and he, he makes sure. He'll stand behind. Oh yeah. Well, he stands behind it too. If if you yeah. have a problem with these, I like, just bring it back. He's well, he's a solid guy. Gotcha. You know, I know pawn shops kind of have a reputation of being a little shady, but <laughs> he he's he's not one that I worry about. But uh, so yeah, the art of bartering, you know, and what to barter and and how. Even if nothing bad ever happens and our economy stays stable, it still, it's still still a good yeah, it's a good a, skill. It, it's a good skill. It's money saving. It both if you're doing it right, both parties are benefiting. Mm-hmm. Everybody's happy when you have a good trade, right? Yeah. So, see, and you trade for guns I, with holsters and guns. Yeah, and I trade. and I trade guns for trade other, guns stuff, for other stuff, ammunition, and- whatever. You know, skills. If you, that's the one thing people don't realize also. When you talk about bartering, you're like, well, I don't have anything. And it's like, well, what skills do you have? Mm-hmm. If you're, a, if you are a mechanic, a plumber, an electrician, in, in a time of crisis when our economy goes in the toilet, you will be rich. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because those are things, those are skills that everybody needs that not everybody has. Yeah. And, and, People will be willing to trade you whatever if, you know, if times are rough and you need a plumber because your plumbing's screwed up, you know, and and everybody's, like, hunkered down in their homes, yeah, you're going to have that plumber over and you'll be like, how much, how much, you know, wheat or flour or beans do you want in exchange for getting my plumbing back, you yeah. know? It depends on your situation, and, and Glenn's book actually kind of highlighted it a little bit. If you don't have a lot of storage, you can well, you can trade beans, bullets, band aids, uh, right. silver, mm-hmm. gold, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, also, you can trade like alcohol and tobacco and so luxury coffee. items. Well, luxury or huge. addiction items are even more. Well, the, addiction the, items the, are luxury, luxury items. items. Luxury, yeah. I guess, call it that. Yeah. 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 No, and we have. You know, we don't drink. But we have we have vodka because we use it to preserve tinctures. herbs and stuff like that to make tinctures. Mm-hmm. It's also good for sterilizing stuff and mm-hmm. things like that, and it's a good bartering item. <laughs> you know, I actually looked at a, a still. You can buy a still off of Amazon. Yeah. You can make your own. Sure. But I was thinking of you, using it just... you got to be really careful and know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, and there's, there's a lot of information out there. But uh, I recently got a CPAP. Mm. I, I'm sleep challenged because <laughs> i'm so fat i'm sure insight challenge insight challenge i'm old I got <laughs> one foot in the grave the other one sliding towards it but i uh we might have to put stand down so <laughs> that's what we're saying please do me do, do a, a guy solid <clears throat> if i start talking like joe put me down <laughs> oh jeez. Uh, but no what i was trying to say is uh, for a while there i couldn't find distilled water now you really? can boil it and cool it but it's not actually distilled see we have a reverse osmosis system mm-hmm. that, so we that's all we drink is filtered water but, well filtered is different than distilled not uh, if it's still like reverse osmosis there's no mineral in it whatsoever mm-hmm. okay so that'd work too oh there's a lot of waste with it unfortunately a lot of wastewater oh really yeah what, what do you mean wastewater so as it goes through the filter it separates the clean water it goes into whatever you're filling mm-hmm. and then there's wastewater that just goes down the drain weird yeah. I didn't, why, why would it waste? Just like all the stuff that gets filtered. Yeah. Oh, okay. All, all the crud that's it's taken out, it's got to go somewhere. Anyway, finish the thought. Distilled water, you can use distilled water. And I, don't, I don't know if you'd be running a, a CPAP in a, an yeah. emergency situation, but you, I mean, you could save money on it. And, and you could also make your own alcohol. Um, yeah. Just straight, like Everclear. Well, and there's, like there's that distillers that you can get that are specifically for water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody I know that's used one, they always overflow. <laughs> they always make a mess. So another thing I was going to say with on that topic is uh-huh. if you have, like, no useful skills, yeah, then you will want to either develop some skills yep. 
which you can always learn stuff. Yeah. Or you can do a combination of that and you can get items. Yeah. So if you don't have skills, make sure you have lots of items. Yeah. Because you don't want to be a guy without items or skills. And the thing of it is, is if, if you're sitting there going, I don't have any skills worth trading for, you, prob- you probably do. You just need to think about it. One thing that is would be hugely advantageous as a as a barter tool even in not like a major disaster but let's say just a local you know weather conditions trees are down or whatever if you own a chainsaw yeah i do too pawn shop thanks (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's huge gas and uh, keep a little bit of the the bar oil on on hand yeah the, the gas so i listened oil. to yeah. a podcast of, i can't remember who the gentleman was but he was in uh, S- S- uh, sarajevo yes mm-hmm. uh, kosovo uh-huh he talked about trading bullets for toilet paper toilet paper for lighters refilling lighters the, the, i read lighters. that article he said after well and when it first went down after yeah. a month there wasn't a stick of wood all the trees were cut down no, yep, in the they, parks. Because they had no way to heat their house, their homes. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and they said the guy who never went without anything was the guy in the village who knew how to make fuel for lighters. Yeah. Well, to, huh. it was butane that he he learned how to refill just the Vic lighters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, so I, 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 have, I regularly, if I'm like at the grocery store sitting in line for a while, look. Like, Oh, there's a four pack of lighters. Mm-hmm. I'll just throw in there a few bucks, you yeah. know. Yeah. They're laying all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't have enough lighters. But yeah, and they talked about the same same situation in Sarajevo. There were days when they would trade bullets for food, and then there were other days where they would trade food for bullets. Yeah. Just depending on what was happening. <clears throat> one at other that thing time. too that you'll notice in the book there, and if you listen to one second after you did, you you listen yeah. to that right. People that survive are going to group together. You yeah. can't survive alone. Yeah, the whole lone wolf concept Impossible. is ridiculous. Yeah, because you can't be up all, all the time. You can't collect wood. You can't um, gather food yeah. and protect yourself. So right. you you have to sort of compartmentalize and and mm-hmm. and pull together. So it's probably a good idea to get to know your neighbors or For find sure. some that you you want to go to. Um, find somebody that has a cabin. Now, as far as bugging out, oh, I'm going to go out and kill some deer. There won't be a deer left after. <laughs> yeah. A week, you know, yeah, something like that. It's but, true, but you can gather food, and then not not in Utah. We we have so many hunters here. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, yeah. So in in the long term, you're going to want to grow a garden. You're going to have to learn how to oh, grow a garden. Oh, for sure, and learn how. That's another class that we're going to be doing. How to preserve food that you're yeah. that you're growing, or you know, in the fall, you're going to go buy a couple cases of apples because that's when everyone's got apples. And exactly. What to do? How to preserve them so that you've got them. But heirloom the seeds, yep. heirloom seeds are the one you you got to start with heirloom. Yeah, mm-hmm. otherwise you can't you can't grow anything yeah. from well, half the stuff. Yeah, so there are heirloom packs out there mm-hmm. that you can get. I've got a couple of them. Yeah, long time ago. Yeah. So anyway, that was. I'm I'm curious. Is are there other things that you guys have noticed that maybe mindsets are changing a little bit based well, on the crazy thing right now <clears throat> is like gas. Yeah. Gas prices are so high it's it's kind of makes you wonder with gas prices going high then the cost of everything is Every, going to that's go gonna like affect food, everything no, no, no. transportation all, all you have to do is buy an electric vehicle then it will, it'll <laughs> yeah <matter>. electric trucks <laughs> yeah that just charge you know what i've been that, looking at that electricity comes magically through an outlet electric yeah. e-bikes yeah 2500 bucks but they look cool that's a dirt cheap one is it really yes Ooh. I, I have friends that have spent ten grand plus on electric yeah. e-bikes. They're crazy. So yeah, the the cost of gas. That's you know essentially if you don't get a huge raise this year, yeah, to make up for the increased cost of of gas and inflation, yeah, then you are getting a huge cut in pay this year, right? And yeah. so you won't be able to buy as much. So you're. Yeah. You're gonna have to make do with less. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know what I saw? Just like um, <clears throat> Saturday night, I went to the jazz game. We we st- Cheryl and I and and, and uh, Brandon Lynn. We went to Red Lobster. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> I had that crab, so I ordered crab and I made us late to the game. I, f- I forgot. You, they should pay you to eat crab because you have to 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm doing all do the work here. I know. I mean, I probably lost more calories than I gained eating. <laughs> That's not true because I ate a whole bunch and a bunch of rolls. But uh, we had to wait 50 minutes because half the restaurant was empty. They didn't have enough wait staff or employees to serve all the people that were there. Yeah. And while we were there, the dishwasher walked out. So they didn't have plates. Huh. So you know, like a bread plate to put your rolls on. Yeah. The guy goes, hey, sorry, I don't have any plates. Just be like, do you, do you have a paper, a paper towel? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that's what we do at home. Yeah, that's, well, that's what we used. But uh, I, that and uh, and this is all r- relative to food. <laughs> Cheryl and I went and had a JCW's. Two burgers. It was 30 bucks. Now you're talking. Yeah. yeah. Oh, JCW's. <laughs> oh. Uh. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, food has already gone up. Oh, I mean, you can't touch a Big Mac and a drink for less than ten bucks. And you and you shouldn't. I know. <laughs> Stan, <laughs> this is a different conversation. <laughs> that is just as an example. Uh-huh. That all that stuff all takes tastes the same, you know. It all yeah. comes from one bat. Uh huh. At McDonald's, but it's, no, it's, it's just Soylent Green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the food is obviously everybody already knows this. This is uh, it's obvious, but yeah. But I but my whole point in this conversation is I think a lot of people that wouldn't necessarily have caught on a few years ago to some of this mm-hmm. stuff are they're paying attention. They're paying attention. A lot attention more people jumping on the wagon and they're and they're changing their behavior and thought their, their process. thought process. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah, I I had a a friend, neighbor, a neighbor friend, uh, come over and he's like, hey, uh, you know, when you get a minute, I'd like to have you show me, you know, handguns. I I want to buy my first gun, and so, you know, I took some time. Uh, last couple of weeks to to show them mm-hmm. handguns, different things, pros and cons, different you know the the double action, the single action, the right. striker fire, all that stuff. And then I went to Gunny's with him and helped him pick out his his first handgun or first gun. Nice. What did he get? He got a 19x. Okay. And he has a little. Not bit, what I would have picked. No, I, but but that's not a bad way to go. Had, here's, had, right? No. no, no here's no, the thing: always. is they've got pretty good selection. Of yeah. Guns nowadays. I, I, I tried to steer them away from the tiny concealed carry guns because yeah. as your first gun, you want to, you're learning fundamentals, right. basics, and you want a gun that's going to be fun to shoot. Right. Because then you'll shoot more, so yeah. then you'll get better, and you could get a concealed carry gun later. Right. And anyways, he, he liked, we kind of decided on the 19, Yeah. but then he, he picked up a 19X, and it was the right color, and uh. the extra bit of grip. grip sure yeah since he has bigger hands 19x than... is a full-size grip it's it's a, it's a it's, it's a, a 19 Glock 17 grip on a 19, 19. slide oh okay yeah. Yeah. yeah and for for me that kind of gun when it first came out i thought it was pointless yeah that's but where after I having shot one like i have now i now have like two or three friends with them yeah. and they just really like shooting them well, it, so. and and they're good guns yeah my point is if if i'm gonna do that i'm just gonna get a 17 and or 19 i, I in my yeah, opinion that's the thing, though, is like, and a gen 3 so you can shoot nine if you don't want that 40. if you don't want the extra long slide you want something that's a little yeah. bit shorter yeah. whatever it's, you yeah. shoot whatever as yeah. long as they shoot it yeah that's yeah. great that's that's what, that's what felt good to him and yeah and so then he came over and we made some ammo but and and then he also bought a an ar lower that we're gonna Oh, nice. Build. So awesome. he's like going all in. But the funny thing is, I asked him, I was like, you know, so what, what kind of, you know, this is your first gun? Like, is your wife like anti-gun or what? And he's like, well, she, yeah, she doesn't really like guns. And I'm like, well, then why, what happened? Why are you getting a gun? Yeah. Well, she told me I need to get a gun. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so, yeah, he's, he's an immigrant. He came from, I think, Uruguay. Nice. And uh, became a citizen. Nice. And, mm. and his wife was thinking, hey, it's. We, this is something we should have. Yeah. So. And I've I've talked to several of my own neighbors, same kind of situation. A lot of customers, like new shooters that I'm get that are getting referred to me for holsters by trainers that I know. Mm-hmm. And you know the the conversation, and this is this is happening pretty regularly. Is yeah, me and my husband, we we just bought our first guns, and we have a training class with this guy in the next week or two, and we need to get set up with the right gear. Whereas you know, even five years ago, you know, during Obama, we had tons of new shooters, um, but a lot of them were 
they're just getting a gun because they felt like they needed a they gun, needed to have or a they gun. were worried that they yeah. weren't going to be able to get it, and that's kind of where it stopped. Mm-hmm. There, there wasn't a whole lot of training going on and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now I'm seeing people aren't just buying a gun; they want to know like, how to use them. I need them. some gear, and I want to know how to use it, and so that makes me, you know, thought processes are changing, mm-hmm. and and that's I the think, way it should be. I think be. the Russian thing where. That's got people worried, which... Yeah, it it's like, oh, they the citizens didn't have their own guns. Like, Well, in Ukraine, a lot of them do, but not like A lot like of them they, didn't. Yeah. And, and they so do they, now. They do yeah. now. I've yeah. seen them ha- handed them out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. that That's mind-boggling. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, yeah, and, and that's the thing about, you know, it's got people thinking like, oh, what, you know, it, it seems like something that could never happen in our country like getting evaded or whatever yeah but i i that conversation always bothers me when you're talking to somebody and and you talk about well we have guns in this country and this is why in case of you know a tyrannical dictatorship not necessarily dictatorship but But, government and stuff like well that'll never happen here (sighs) really uh (laughs) what what's preventing that from happening see there's a there's look, a, at, look at canada yeah well, yeah there, there's a scale too there's a little bit of ty- tyranny and then there's a despot right yeah and i th- i think we're moving up that scale right now. for sure we are yeah so or or you talk about genocide oh that had never happened here why why wouldn't it yeah i would i like to think that that would never happen here but, you know, with, like if I'm talking to anti-gun people, why do we, you know, well, every, you know, what was the first thing Germany did before killing all the Jews? They rounded up all the private guns. Yep. You know, and that is, well, that would never happen here. Yeah, that's because the government's never going to round up our guns. <laughs> <laughs> not without not without starting a civil war. I wonder how, mili- how many millions of ARs are out there now. Oh. There's I mean, it, so it's many. the number one most popular rifle. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And I, I try every day to help it become even more yep. popular. <laughs> yeah. Everybody needs one. Yeah. Absolutely the best starter gun. And so, mm-hmm. w- which lower did he get? Did he settle on a uh, Anderson? What did he go with? A Aero Precision? <sighs> I, you know, you I remember? can't remember. Did he get it at Gunny's? Yeah, he just got it at Gunny's. Because they've got a lot of... It was, either, it was either Aero or Anderson. Anderson, yeah. yeah. That's kind of my two. The kind of... Mm-hmm. Ander- Palmetto. Anderson's you Palmetto's can't go great. wrong with. Yeah. A lowers just it just holds your parts. True story. Yeah. It doesn't do anything for accuracy mm-hmm. or anything else. If but an got, arrow is just a little bit cleaner, it a is. little bit yeah. nicer. Yeah. The, and if it rattles a little bit, you put an accu wedge in it. Yeah. If it rattles, it does not affect accuracy. It, yeah, no. it doesn't. It's you're right. Yeah. It's the, the it's just the the comfort it gives you having mm-hmm. a tight yeah. rifle. Right. Yeah. But Toit. the the worst Toit. worst AR build I've ever had mm-hmm. was on the most expensive lower I ever bought. Mm-hmm. It it was one of those spikes tactical ones yeah. that had the <clears throat> the the shark teeth and yes. stuff on oh, yeah. it. Was, I'm like, I'm gonna build something cool and so I built that and it was a it was a nice rifle. That thing rattled I mean, it was so loose. It mm-hmm. drove me. I got rid of it. I'm like, mm. yeah. I had a matched milled set. I think they, it was STI, or I can't remember exactly what it was. But uh, I, I've told you the story of Bill Geisley, right? Right. His booth was right next to Wilson Combat. Oh yeah, yeah. Wilson Combat is well known for their accurate rifles. Right. And uh, his technician was there. I didn't talk to to uh, the Wil- Wilson. Is his name Bill too? Bill Geisley. Sure. Well, well, I didn't talk to him. I talked to his technician. Yeah. But their pins, the takedown and the pivot pin, you have to pop, punch, pop out with a punch. Yeah. And uh, Geisley was right next to him, and they were both kind of talking. I said, I want to build an accurate rifle, you know. And, and they said, doesn't matter how much it rattles. What your, right. your accuracy is going to be in your, your bolt yep. carrier, your barrel, and uh, your trigger. Yep. Yeah. Because the lock time is so fast, you're talking thousandths of a second mm-hmm. or mill- milliseconds. Yeah, the, the gun's going to be out. The, the barrel, bullet's going to be out the barrel before it rattles or moves or anything like right. that. So, yeah, you're right. In in essence, it's just a it's, part holder. But it's just annoying if if they're particularly. It loose. is. Yeah, there's the cool factor. Yeah, there's functional if, and there's cool. If it's like too loose for you, if you get it a Cerakote job on it, that helps. It does help yeah, tighten yeah. it up. Or the AccuWedge. AccuWedge, man. You, yeah. you, you, it won't move. You can't. You can't move. Yeah. So. 
anyway, but. everybody needs one. Yep. And yeah. uh, we need more training. Uh, sure. If anybody knows some good trainers in the Utah area, I'm really interested in pistol training and in uh, carbine, urban rifle training. And, yeah. And uh, I'd like to get some of our listeners maybe together and do a class fun. and, yeah. and uh, just help everybody out, especially the new shooters. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, if you're if you're listening, we'd love to hear your feedback on things that you're noticing where you are, because every region's going to be a little bit different. I think as far as preparedness stuff goes, Utah right here where we are has a pretty forward thinking mindset for preparedness and, and things like that. But uh, are we part of the Redoubt? I think we're we're just outside the Redoubt because we've got Salt Lake City, which is so the American Redoubt. <clears throat> Idaho, um, Montana. He talks about Glenn talks about it in the book, right? I can't remember. You don't remember? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what you're talking about. A lot, about, of, pe- a lot of freedom people, uh, sure. people freedom loving, uh, yeah. less less regulation. They call it the American Redoubt. Oh yeah, I think we're kind of in the heart of that. Well, no, because we got Salt Lake. It's, it 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 kind of cuts us off from the rest of it. But I would mm-hmm. ima- imagine Utah's part of that. But, yeah, I would yeah. think so. Yeah, uh, freedom loving people like to be on their own. Yeah, yeah. So, so but yeah, Taco let us let Taco us know what's it's going time to go. On. So we gotta go. <laughs> let us know what's going on where you live and concerns or things that you see, or if it's changed your mind. The events of today have yeah. changed your mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Uh, do you uh, you have a more urgency for you know, training or more guns or? More food storage or, or stuff like that because of what's going on, or yeah. is it business as usual? Okay. Anyway. All right. Until next time, stay safe, have fun. Take somebody shoot. It'd be nice. <laughs>